And uh, it seems that many Greek ministers claim that the public companies transferred into the fa fund are not intended to be sold. If so, could you explain to us the point of them being in said fund? Thank you. Call uh, Annika to give us a comprehensive uh, overview of the issue raised. Indeed. Um, I can tell you that uh, the Commission has communicated to the Greek authorities its agreement to the proposed candidates for the supervisory board of um, the uh, fund. This was one of the key milestones required for the disbursement of the next tranche of financing. And once this supervisory board is appointed, the next step will be to appoint a board of directors whose members should embody the highest standards of government, governance and independence. And as for your second question, the board hasn't been set up, so we wouldn't want to speculate now on, on, on which companies would be under it and which not. But it's all in line with the agreements of last year. Okay, now we're having Annika here. Anything else we can help you with on the economy? Yes, please. Yesterday in the European Parliament, a president, the president of ECB has complained about an asymmetry in the fiscal rules of the European Union. He was referring to the fact that a Countries with no fiscal margin are forced or obliged not to spend, while countries like Germany with big surplus, uh, they are not obliged to invest and to spend to uh, generate growth in their country in the Eurozone. I wonder if the Commission is planning to present a proposal to cancel this asymmetry and also to give to the citizens uh, the guarantee that the rules are not written in, uh, with more flexibility to one country than to others. I, uh I'm not going to make your interpretation of what uh, the president of the ECB said um, in the parliament mine. Um, I'll simply remind you that we do have a very solid framework as part of the European semester and as part of the stability and growth pact um, we, in which we do enforce the rules for all member states. Um, as if you're referring to some member states uh, not doing X and some not others doing it, uh, we have very specific country specific recommendations. They've been recently um, made even um, even more focused and uh, as part of the revamped semester and I, I'll, I am sure I can talk you through the semester and the stability and growth pact, remind you of our flexibility communication of January 2015, but uh, that would be that. So if I understand correctly, uh, the Commission is not planning to make a proposal on this asymmetry. So countries with surpluses will not be obliged to invest, while countries with no margin will be obliged not to spend. Again, your interpretation to you. Um, we. I, as I say, I don't see Draghi's interpretation quite, uh, Draghi's words quite like you do, um, and we wouldn't comment on them. But uh, let me remind you in a wider context that indeed we've always said we would come forward with a review, um, with a white paper in March next year, um, in which we look at the future deepening of EMU, which would then take us as part of the five presidents report to the next stage of completing our economic and monetary union. Okay, let's move on. Anything else for Annika? Doesn't seem to be the case. Thank you, Annika. Let's move on. Oh, yes, with Annika, yes. <laughs> It's going to be really quick. I just want to know if the European Commission has any concern about the situation of Deutsche Bank and if the President Juncker has had any contact with Chancellor Merkel during the latest